Regina says, oh yeah, hey yeah. Okay. All right. So um, while Reverend Rich was singing, I was sitting there and uh, boy, such a feeling of overwhelming gratitude rose up in me that I thought I was going to start crying. Um, so you all heard our third new practitioner intern. Three for three. And um, our three new practitioners and our ongoing practitioners. And as I look out here and out there, I see all of our community here. And, um, and as I was sitting there, I was thinking, how did I get to be here talking to all of you now? How did that happen? <laughs> it was not part of my plan. So, but what a blessing. So all I can say is this teaching works. And at a, when I first came into this teaching, I was one of those, I come and I go and I come and I go. And I know it all, I know it all, I know it all. For about five years, I was uh, what you call the revolving door visitor, you know, and every, I would come when my life was completely horrific and I was like, his, and I'd come crawling in and I would listen to the inspiring words and I'm like, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. And I'd go off again and disappear for a few months or something. And, um, and then, and that was just my style. That was my path. That's what I needed to get clear and to, and to finally get that my way of approaching life was not working. And so after about five years of that, I realized, okay, my life's not working. I need to get serious. And so I started taking classes, beginning with the beginner classes. And we've got one that John's uh, starting tomorrow night. And uh, for three straight years, I was in classes. I took every class that was offered. They were offered on Tuesday nights. And every Tuesday night, I would be there. And I had my little spot in the corner, far away from people, because in the dark, so that years later, uh, I think it was even someone in our community said, I remember you way over in the corner. And I would put all my baggage in the chair next to me so no one could come near me. Uh, but that was my style. And that was the way that I, uh, my path that I needed to grow in. And so from that beginning, in what? That happened what? In the 80s? From that beginning, somehow I ended up here. And um, I'm not hiding in the corner in the dark, afraid of putting bags between me and people. Which brings us to today's talk. <laughs> you wondered where I was going with this, right? Relationships, right? So I've had a number of conversations with people the past few weeks about relationships, and I've been thinking a lot about my own relationships. And I was called to unearth a book, very old book, cost $3.95. Um, <laughs> that I got be, uh, right around, right before I got into this teaching. And this gentleman, Ken Keyes Jr., um, people are going, oh yeah, I know him. Yeah, he was uh, very big in um, supporting people in workshops and in a program on how to live their lives uh, with unconditional love and a high, bringing a higher consciousness to it. And so he wrote this little book called A Conscious Person's Guide to Relationships. And I have kept it since I first got it all these years. And so it's ragged and I've read. But boy, that early message that I picked up from this book um, has stayed with me. And I think that if we want to improve our, per our personal experience of relationships that there's another tip in here for us in the Art of Living series, part six. And the tip is uh, attachment or involvement. And Ken Keyes, he uses the word addiction instead of attachment, but I changed it to attachment because I didn't remember right what he said when I wrote the title. <laughs> so uh, addiction, attachment, it's the same thing, experience in me. So what we need to work, uh, understand about relationships is number one, you cannot 
live without relationships. So deal with it. <laughs> Get over it. People, they're everywhere. Even, <laughs> you know, even with the masks and the staycation, I mean, you, you had to deal with people. And we tried our best to stay as far away from them as possible because they are who they are and they do what they do. And, um, but no, not even six feet away and not even a mask can protect you, can protect your heart from all that you experience when you're with other people. And so we've got to get a better way for opening our heart and being affected by others. We want to be affected by love and kindness and gentleness, but our beliefs in the opposite always enter in. And so one of the gifts that relationships give us is an opportunity to see where we don't believe in love, an opportunity to see where we don't love or where we fear. In other words, those hidden parts of ourselves that we're afraid to look at or that we don't want to admit exist in us, those, those false beliefs that are just really nasty and mean because we don't want to deal with the simple fact that they exist in us, what we do is project them onto other people. And that's what relationships serve to show us is what we are really believing or fearing about life. And so I love the, uh, the readings this morning about vicious, evil, nasty other beings. <laughs> And what we need to realize is that we f believe in viciousness. We believe in hurt and harm. And because we don't want to believe in it, we suppress it. We certainly don't intend to be that way, but we'll project the, the law just projects that under, to other people for us so that people are a mirror showing us what's in those deep recesses of our beliefs. And so if we believe someone is evil or rotten or nasty or lying or stealing or whatever, then we need to realize that we're projecting our belief that those things exist onto other people. So you don't have to be lying and stealing and rotten yourself, but you believe that it's possible to be lying and stealing and rotten. And because you don't want to be that way, you project that onto, the, onto other people. And people will behave in a way that will make you believe in it more. So that's what relationships serve us to do. Ken Keyes and um, there's a, another gentleman, Paul Farini, who, who stated in such a beautiful way that the divine purpose for us in entering into relationships is to see those parts of ourselves that we cannot see on our own to become aware of what we are believing, and then to heal it. And so Ken Key says that we will enter into relationships and we will feel what it feels like. We will feel the experience of our false beliefs, which he calls addictions, or we'll feel it as attachment. So whenever you're in a relationship with someone and you Feel this. Arr, I need you to. I want you to. You gotta. Will you please? Whenever you're, you're uh, uh, how should we call it? Your uh, you're strong arr, kind of emotions come up in you. Uh, it's a clue that there is a false belief that somehow this other person has to behave a certain way in order for you to be happy. And so whenever we enter into a relationship with strong attachment, we suffer those false beliefs that create that uh, attachment. And we can't get away from it because we all, come on, we're all human and we all have some false beliefs. And if you don't know what your false beliefs are, get out there into the world. People will show you what they are right away. <laughs> Right? They, they're very generous in uh, letting you know, right? In your face. 
what your stuff is. And so what we want to learn how to do is when we become aware of that strong energy in us of attachment or addiction that, oh, I am now experiencing something I believe which is not truth. And then a happier way to be rather than getting that other person to change their ways is to go and do our inner work. And if you're watching, if you're here, we are people who believe in spiritual growth. So we go out there in the world and, and then we go into that inner sanctum, that, that closet, that, that divinity within, and we do our spiritual work. And whether it be spiritual mind treatment, meditation, contemplation, uh, fear to faith releasing prayers, or uh, I praise you, I raise you prayers, whatever that, whatever that spiritual practice is, what we are doing is, is we are taking responsibility for our stuff that's coming up as these strong energies dealing with people out there. And we are calling on the divine to set us free of those beliefs and that experience. And so only people can do that for us. And people, right? Who need people are the luckiest people <laughs> in the world. Just one person. <laughs> <laughs> but what um, the thing is that we are here to also experience the glory of God in the two or more as oneness. And one is the loneliest number that you will ever. <laughs> oh God, who's, who's singing those old songs? All right, I'm clearly tuned into some radio station. You know, I kind of think that the radio waves from all the radio stations are just floating through, and every once in a while I just tune into one, and I hear their program. Okay. So, um, but oneness, when we are alone and separated, is not oneness. It is duality. It's I'm all alone, and I'm separated from all of you. And that's why all of this, you know, social distancing, there's nothing wrong with social distancing, but for those of us who are experiencing loneliness and separation with it, it's, it's a clue that we are believing in separation. And oneness is no duality. And so it is only in relationship that we can experience the joy of discovering that we're not alone, that we are one, that there is a God. And so we have that feeling like I did uh, just a few moments ago, that overwhelming feeling of gratitude because of all this, this one universal presence that I'm seeing here, there, and everywhere with each and every one, with each and every one of you. We can only have those experiences with others. And so relationships are important to us, can't get away from it. And so we just want to come up with a way that we can be in relationships and have more peace of mind and a little bit more happiness and a whole lot less angst. So there's another word called involvement. And that's where we have choice. We have no choice over our addictions and attachments that they are subjective beliefs and they just when they cut when that button gets hit they just rise up and they're in control and until we do our healing work we are in control of it and we can have that awareness when you know and i and i have said to our board of trustees from time to time warning warning i'm no longer in principle you know that i mean that's that's my way of saying, I'm wacko, my button's been pushed, and I am no longer in control. I'm no longer in choice. Uh, but if we can be in relationships where we lower that attachment, 
where we lower those activations, um, we have choices of how involved we want to be with other people. And that's where we always have choice. And Ken Keyes uh, says that being in love is not a reason for being more involved with someone. Because what we're working for is to be in love with everybody. And so when we do love everyone, that's not a reason for being more involved with everyone. And being more involved with someone is you are making a decision to be more closely connected and to experience living life together in some way. So I have um, a little uh, computer game that I have enjoyed for many years. It's a hidden object game. And you go in and you look for things that are hidden and you get points <laughs> and you raise levels. And I have played it on my own for several years off and on a uh, fun little game that I like to do. And the, and the music's kind of cool and the pictures are kind of cute. And you got points and you raise levels. And that's always uh, motivating for me. Just give me some points and I'll, you know, that's my little carrot. And I have noticed that you can join leagues with other people and play the game with other people, which I have always resisted. Because who are these people? And is it worth it? And do you get more points? You know, <laughs> these questions, I, you know, I couldn't know. But for some reason, um, I guess they were doing a campaign to get you to join leagues or something. It kept coming up as a choice, kept coming up as a choice. And I said, all right, all right, I'll join a league. I joined a league. Nothing happened. I think the league booted me out of the league because nothing happened. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, nothing happened. But about two months ago, I joined another league. Very exciting. This is an active league. Right away, they said, hello. You can give and receive energy. And they waited for me to respond. And I'm like, okay then, how do I do it? And then they, they told me what to do. You press this button and you press that button. So I started pressing these buttons and I'm like, okay, that's nice. You get more points, you know, but whatever. Well, then I found out every week there's a tournament of all the leagues. So there's 40 people in my league and we're in the tournament. And so we're all working together to get more points. All together, 40 people all getting points. And you can see how you're doing compared to all the other leagues. And you can see how your points contribute to the total. And you can see how many points you contribute compared to all the other people in your league. And you can see what the other leagues are doing. And you can, uh, it's just so exciting. And then your league could get promoted if you do really well or demoted if you do very poorly. And so we got to pull together. And so there's all this chat, chat going on about, we can do it if everybody stays together and da, 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 whatever. And we, you know, and then the, the, the tournament is over and, and we, and we get some points. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> and you're like, whew, all right. And then the next week it's another one. So, uh, I'm involved. I'm involved in my addiction <laughs> of this points, whatever, okay. But a couple of weeks ago, something weird was going in the chit chat. And um, amongst a couple of the members, and um, somebody said something that another person took offense to, and that person kept saying things. And then finally, the person that was taking offense said, three strikes, that's it. I'm only in the game for fun, and they quit the league. And this was one of our top point earners. And then that person's friend quit. And then Kim quit. I don't even know who Kim was. She just quit. And I thought, well, who needs this drama? And as soon as this tournament is over, and I get my points, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving the league. I do not choose to play the game 
that started getting played in the chit chat, which was, you said this, you said that, but, but, but I'm like, look, I'm playing hidden objects. I'm not interested in, you did this, you did that. Blah, 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 blah. And, and also these people are from all over the world. So I think the offense was something somebody said about some other's country or something. You know, it's easy to take offense when you're from all different countries because you don't know what is offensive, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, whatever. That's not the game I want to play. And so the point is that um, Ken Key says here, let me see if I can find it. Um, it's coming. You can choose someone because you to be more involved with because you like to play the same life games together. So the way, the criteria to use in choosing to be more involved with someone, he recommends is we choose to be involved with someone because we enjoy playing the same life games together. And that's all it is. And so it turns out the, the my particular league actually booted out the, the offender and um, they stopped quibbling. And so I'm like, okay, I'll stay with them a little bit more. But if they get going into that kind of stuff, I'm out of there, you know, as soon as the tournament's over and I get my points. So, um, so that's what we need to realize is that we are here to evolve and grow in awareness of oneness and relationships help us by first of all, showing us where we don't believe in oneness and we do our inner work, but then, right, to be more involved, to enjoy playing the same life games together. And so that's where like attracts like. So it's not a question of I fell in love with you, therefore we have to be together. Falling in love is just like I am now attached to you and I believe that you are necessary for my happiness and I believe that you are necessary for me to have this really good feeling inside myself. But as spiritual beings who are growing in awareness, we realize, no, wait, that is ours for always. And we don't need any particular person in our lives to feel that. And our personal goals are really to love everyone, to love the one we're with, to love whoever we are with. But loving them does not mean you want to play with them. And so that's where you use your wisdom and your guidance and you think about it that other people come to you and they offer you. It's like, it's like a tennis game. You know, they shoot that ball over the net toward you. You get to choose whether you want to hit the ball back or not, whether you want to play or not. And that's a choice that we want to make, not because of our addictions and our, and our attachments and all of those false beliefs going on cr crazy on in us, but because we are at that level of preference and we are saying, wait, I, I'm, I'm not interested in talking about the things that you want to talk about. I am a knitter. I have a couple of knitting buddies in our studio audience. <laughs> and you know, knitters, not everyone wants to talk about knitting. I was driving here and there was a poorly written sign on the side of the road that said yard sale. And I thought it said yarn sale. <laughs> so we knitters know what I'm talking about. Like that's what I first thought it was. So I realized, you know, that's not a conversation for everyone. Not everyone wants to talk for two hours about knitting, but I do. And so I have joined together with friends in order to have that outlet, in order to play that game together. Um, there are a lot of other people, hello there, Facebook friends, who love to talk about uh, the political situation right now and get all upset about it and offended and whatever like that. And I choose not to participate in that game of talking about politics right now. I do choose to vote and I love being fully involved in that process and to think about it and think about the issues and think about the candidates and, and then to actually vote. I love that experience. I give my full attention and awareness to it, 
and I enjoy it fully, but I don't want to talk about it with other people because it seems like you, you move into that game of anger and who's right and who's wrong. And I, I just don't want to play that game right now. And so your relationships can be improved if you realize that we all are here at choice to choose who we want to be with. We are a spiritual community because when we're together, we want to talk about spiritual things. We want to be uplifted. We want to, we want to, without asking, we want to know what's wrong with my consciousness <laughs> without asking, without being asked, right? What am I believing that's creating this in my world? We loved, I love, I don't know about you, but I love to talk about that stuff. That's why I ended up here. I love talking about this stuff. I'll talk about it day or night, 24 hours a day. What on earth, what kind of belief could have created this particular mess? I mean, it's fascinating stuff to me. And so those of you who uh, are in my world, I'm assuming you like to talk about that stuff too, right? So we're playing this game of growing in spiritual awareness together. And then there's people playing all sorts of other games. I've got a wonderful cousin who loves to go fishing and he's playing that fishing game. And, you know, he, he used to, he hasn't done it for a while. He used to send me, you know, messages of the fish that he caught at five o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> so why aren't you doing that, Patrick? Send me some more messages. Okay. I love his, love his fish, but I don't choose to go fishing myself. So you can see the difference between being at that level of preference in your involvement with people where I'm just not into that. I'm just not interested. Um, I love watching cooking contests, but I don't want to cook. <laughs> I'll eat, <laughs> but I don't want to cook. I will wash your dishes in exchange for you cooking. I will do that. Yes. <laughs> I got to take her. Okay. So, um, you know, but I'm just not into that. I mean, I could be if I wanted to be, but I don't want to be. I, I sort of feel like been there, done that. Um, but I don't get it. But that's okay. But I'll watch cooking contests round the clock. Love it. So realize that that is the way we are created to be with other people, to be at that level of preference where we are choosing how involved we are with a particular person. And out of our control, our issues will come up. And that's for us to handle, not for the other person to handle and change. It's for us to handle in our spiritual work. And so again, his title is A Conscious Person's Guide to Relationships. We do the spiritual work that we need to do so that we can stay at choice as to our level of involvement. And again, there it's at the level of preference. So there's nothing, we don't have to make the other person wrong if we don't wanna be involved with what their, their life is about. And if we are making them wrong, that's a clue there's an attachment in there for us needing to be healed. They don't have to be wrong. It's just not like, we're not simpatico, it's not like you know, go fish, go cook, go play chess, enjoy. And I won't, right? So, so we want to, we're here to be happy all the time and to be involved with other people. And so we want to, and, and we want to be involved because involvement, he's got a little, uh, he's got a little, uh, grid here. Maximum Invol All right, so we'll go for the worst. Say you have maximum involvement with maximum addiction. Maybe when we were teenagers, we all had that experience, right? I love you so much. And you were with them 24 hours a day and then they done you wrong and your heart broke, right? So that, Lee, that he, could, he would call it romantic or possessive love. You know, you're just together all the time and oh my gosh, it's so wonderful while you're in it and you know then you keep growing <laughs> no it's not wonderful you know okay <laughs> i know because 
Then you move into minimum involvement and maximum addiction. That's the broken heart. He doesn't love me anymore, whatever. You know, been there, done that, right? And then there's minimum involvement and minimum addiction. And that's friendship. You know, you're involved with people while you're engaged in your activity, but you don't get all involved in um, all their lives, whatever. And, and as uh, I notice with my friends, there's invitations to get more involved in their lives. And I think about it. I think about it consciously. I think, hmm, that's an invitation to get more involved in their lives. Do I want to? And I think about what they're like and what they're involved with and what their activities are. And I think, hmm, yes, I think I will. I think I do enjoy being with that person. I will get more involved. I'll, I'll, I'll do that one little thing. Let's, let's, let's see. So we do that, right? And then there's the, there's the bonus, the best one. Maximum involvement with minimum addiction. And that is all the goodies, no unhappiness. The addictions, the attachments, we have to handle. So we're in charge of that. We can heal that and we don't need other people to do it. We could do our personal work on our own and get enough feedback from just going to the store to, to know what else you believe, right? Or, you know, playing hidden objects game in a league. The kitten heart league is the name of my league. <laughs> kitten, they like kittens too. Okay, so, um, uh, so we handle our own need for healing. And then while we're doing that, we choose to get more and more involved with those in our lives. And then ultimately, right, many of us want that, that right and perfect person, but things have changed now. That right and perfect person to be married to, to be uh, involved with, be living together, that person is not there because they're the only ones that you can love and who will love you. They're not there because it means you'll never be alone. They're not there because now I finally, I actually heard um, one gentleman tell me that he wanted to get married in order to have a wife to take care of him in his old age. And I'm like, <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, well, anyway, um, but there's some other, you know, people who would like to do that. Good. Divine love brings together and maintains together those who belong together. So the glory of God is manifest. So you could do that if you want. I don't mean to make fun. What do I know? Um, but when you realize that you love everyone, you then want to engage into maximum involvement with a particular person just because it's so much more fun. And you're sharing the game of living together and all the little minutiae of life together and figuring it all out. And you all, I'm sure, have had that experience where you've had maximum um, where you've maximum involvement or, or you've been maximum, well, oh, 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 no. you've all had that experience where you've been physically in someone's world a lot and very, very close, but they have been completely distant and not involved with you. That was my uh, earliest experience of relationship uh, in living with someone, it was that there we were living together and we were talking about, we really enjoyed the business of living together, but emotionally there was no involvement. And so, so what we want to do when we're talking involvement, it's involvement, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally and spiritually. And you think of the other and you allow yourself, you share your life so that the other may think about you and you enjoy playing the game of life together. And you each under, well, the ideal would be that each of you understand that you still have stuff. You got your issues and you can say, warning, warning, warning. <laughs> it is best for you to be nowhere near me right now. <laughs> While I go into my chamber, the secret, the holy the secret place of the Holy of Holies and do my spiritual work, right? So people, <laughs> can't get away from them, gotta live with them, but they're really here for a wonderful, more 
thoroughly enjoyable experience of life. And they are also definitely going to push your button. And we got to get better at having those buttons pushed. So that's a lot to think about. So um, we'll see if there's going to be more on this relationship topic. I'd like to your cards and letters to come in, your posts about what you think about that, if you'd like to hear more. It's a big book. There's more to go. Uh, let's right now take a moment and ha contemplate these things. Reverend Rich, why don't you play something for us? Keep those cards and letters coming in. <laughs> the ships at sea.